Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's first Friday Toast to the Arts and Park show with the National Parks Arts Foundation. We love these shows because, you know, the National Parks Arts Foundation is really cool to artists. Um, and we're talking artists, whether it's a musician, a writer, a poet, comedian. I'm going to bring that up because this is a new one today. Um, and also, you know, you could be a painter or a potter. But this is all for artists that want to go and have a residency in a national park and their residencies, the National Parks Arts Foundation, they're known for doing one month long residency programs in parks across the country. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Chaco Canyon, Fort Union in northern New Mexico, Dry Tortugas National Park, where you can be on your own island, Loggerhead Key. It's pretty cool. So check it out at nationalparksartsfoundation.org. Today, like I mentioned, comedians. Um, and this is going to be the first comedian. Well, I th- yeah, actually, I've I've met some funny artists on the show with everyone with uh, humor, not funny in a weird way, but <laughs> good humor. But uh, this is uh, very exciting because we're going to meet Ben Miller. He is a New York City-based scientist turned comedian, and somehow said, "I'm going to Hawaii." So, welcome, Ben. How are you? Oh, thanks so much for having me. I I, I appreciate all all the preamble to be like, I promise he's an artist. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. He's an artist. You, you you've talked about with a lot of artists who are funny. I'm gonna be the first comedian who's on funny. That's sort of oh, be my goal <laughs> on, on podcast. You, you know, it's actually really interesting. A, a lot of comedians we talk to, they're, they're, they go deep, you know, so there's, yeah. it's really interesting. Um, but for you, I know you are known for doing stand-up science. And I think this yeah. is pretty cool because I think it's hard for people to relate to science. And comedy is a way to do it. I mean, do you ever talk about gas and things like that? You mean like different states of matter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to put it that way. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, for people to understand like where you are now with lava and um, volcanoes and geology and I mean, that's scientific, but I think it's really hard for people to wrap their heads about what happens and how it happens. So through comedy, and I know you just did your event um, at the park. Does it help for people to understand those kind of hard to understand things? Yeah, I, I think it's it, it's definitely helpful if you can present something in like an entertaining and, and compelling context. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's it's sort of an interesting like struggle and balance um, where there's like the the comedian part of me that's like oh, I just want the joke to be like as funny as possible. And then there's the science part that's like, well, but wait, there needs to be some accuracy in there. We got to have the the facts and see. So sometimes, sometimes it can work sort of, um, there can be a symbiosis, but sometimes they're, they're at odds a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, because, and then, it, then the, you know, that's the analytical side, but comedians that I know are super smart. And I think they, I think most comedians should be running the country, you know, because <laughs> well, they're smart, you know oh, what I mean? You haven't met enough comedians, I think. <laughs> well, then there's a lot of comedians I know that, um, yeah, um, we, we got to clean up some, some acts, <laughs> acts right now, but, but yeah. it's, it's interesting that you come from a science background. What led you to say, okay, I want to go to Hawaii volcanoes and apply for a residency for a full month. Oh gosh, that's a, I mean to be honest, like I'd never even heard of the National Parks Arts Foundation or this residency program before I applied. I forget exactly how. I think just like through random Google searches, somehow this just like came up. I was looking for something completely different, and I was like, "Oh, this sounds cool." And I, I genuinely never expected that they would accept a stand-up comedian, um, <laughs> but I, I they ended up doing it, and and now I'm here. So yeah, yeah. So when you when you decided to apply for this because I know it's quite a process and um but you know and I think it's really awesome that they did accept you because it's cool I mean we always talk about this how there's all these different kinds of arts I mean we've had feather masters and we've had you Mm. know multimedia I mean a little bit of everything and now I think you are the first comedian 
on the show. And, and I think that's great. And, and, and the pro, I don't know about in the program itself, but I know from our side, and we've been doing this seven years with them on our shows and um, yeah, it's, it's super cool. But when you were saying, okay, I want to apply for this, what were your intentions and did they change once you got there? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. So I, I think probably like my, my intentions were, I'm going to write a bunch of volcano jokes. Um, See, I was going which, to gas. Which... See, I had to start with gas. Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, there's explosions. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> For sure. Which, yeah, no, and I did end up, you know, learning a lot about volcanoes and writing a lot about volcanoes. But one thing I is that I didn't really expect, just because I'm not that familiar with Hawaii, is just like, yeah, just like learning a lot about the, the culture and then also like the other types of, of science that, that are going on on the island um, also sort of became an, an element of the comedy as well, which was, yeah, very cool. Definitely like, yeah, opened up my mind a little bit. Mm. So so did you go meet with scientists and, and park people while you were there? Yeah, yeah. I, I met with a bunch of different park rangers. Um, I, I, I met with an archaeologist at the park, an entomologist. I met with a bunch of scientists at uh, the USGS's Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, um, which was great. I, I met with a couple of scientists at, at Keck, uh, which is the, the the telescope, big telescope they got. Oh. Cool, cool. And so that's a that's a lot. And so when you go out there, are you recording interviews or writing things down? Like, how do you take that and then put it into comedy? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, really, the thing like I, I, I wish that I had recorded them because I have like uh, a terrible memory. But I guess like part of me was a little bit hesitant, especially because I've never done anything like this before. That like yeah. I was a little bit worried that if I was like whipped out a recorder and was like, is, can I record this? That like it would change the nature of the conversation, or people would be like a little bit more guarded. Um, mm. So I just tried to like have like as natural of a conversation as possible um yeah and then afterwards i would like sit in my car and like have a voice note and just be like talking trying to uh frantically remember all of the things that we talked about for the past two or three hours um which maybe isn't the most effective method but then again this is like my, my first residency like this so, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll perfect the method a little bit more over time but I think there's something to that because when you just sit down and write down everything, you've got it fresh in what mattered to you. And yeah. and when, when you are meeting with people, are you sitting there going, okay, what's funny? What's funny? Or does the funny come from once you like see all the material and then create the web of a joke or a series of jokes, like the full web? Yeah. So I think it, it really depends. I mean, some things might like immediately present themselves it's funny, but more often I'll I'll write down like what's interesting, what's like intriguing, what's unique, um, and, and usually from there, I, I feel like there's you can find a fun angle. Like if if the science is like compelling enough, um, there there should be some sort of of joke in there. Mm. Well, because you know even nature is funny. There's weird yeah. stuff in nature, you know for sure. Um, you know, that's just like, oh, look at that. Like, how? Mm, <laughs> what was yeah. that? You know, so when with what you do with your stand up science, I know coming I, and we can talk about your science background, too. Sure. But uh, I think it's cool because you've gone to some places that you thought, oh, wow, people are into this. And um, you've traveled around a little bit. Right. So this isn't like your first rodeo and traveling with your um your your stand-up because when i was yeah. reading that you you went to edinburgh fringe festival my friends were there they probably oh, saw cool. you yeah <laughs> i'm like dude <laughs> so that's what, what were your friends doing at fringe they were just partying viewing or they put on a show no they were partying they were having a good time <laughs> <laughs> okay they, they did fringe right then they did fringe they, the stress free way no it's... they enjoyed themselves and we took care <laughs> of their dogs <laughs> so that's what happened but they they kept sending us all kinds of fun photos and stuff. So yeah, oh, but cool. um, but yeah. So uh, with over there, like, what? Tell us a little bit about what you were doing. With were you doing stand up there or? Uh yeah 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 that cool. was yeah I mean this is my first time 
doing like a, a fringe festival in Edinburgh Fringe for people that are there. It's like the largest arts festival in the world. Mm. So over the so it's the entire month of August in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um and there's about three thousand shows that happen. Not performances. Like a show will have like a month long run where they're doing like twenty four shows in a row. Um there are like three thousand of those. And of those three thousand maybe a thousand are comedy shows. And so one of those shows was was my show. I I, cool. I developed for the fringe an hour of science jokes, um, and wow. I, I performed there every single day for a month. I mean, technically, I, I did twenty six shows in twenty five days of my, oh my hour. God. Yeah, and then on top of that, I was doing maybe like spots on other people's shows. So I did maybe like sixty or so spots on there. So yeah, so it, it was a lot of comedy. <laughs> Did you have to change it up every day or like when you, I mean, obviously going on spots on other people's shows, you could change it up, but like yeah. in, in case that you had like somebody come back for like day two, <laughs> say, Oh, I enjoyed that. I'm coming back again. And then it's like, Oh crap. Uh, <laughs> not, not you again. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't think I, I did that poorly, but nobody came back. So now yeah. I'm like questioning. You're making me like insecure. Like, oh man, did I mess oh, up? Oh no, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> well, I just go like, you time. know, it's like it's like our friends where they like run bed and breakfast, and they'll be like, oh, okay, these people have been here before. Oh, we fed them that. Yeah. We have to get a new recipe quick. You know, <laughs> it's that same thing. You know, you yeah. have to be different all the time. But, but yeah. Sure. So I mean, there was so. Oh, apologies. What? No, no, no. Oh, it's no cool. I, I, I was is... gonna say, it's like I I wrote the show like here in 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 new york so there were lots of things when i got over there that i didn't realize were like american references like there were a couple of things i knew like obviously you gotta like change all the units to like metric and that sort of stuff but i i realized like that some of my jokes are very like local so they had to either be like cut or changed and the other thing is i'd sort of like conceived of and written the show as like maybe 45 minutes of science themed jokes and like 15 minutes of science themed crowd work but the british audiences were very shy like they did not want to talk um they, 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 i mean like they would enjoy the show but they just like would be like dead silent for for all the the crowd work stuff which was like a little bit frustrating and, and disappointing at, at oh, first but it's, it's a different a while, culture yeah, yeah there's a like a respect kind of, yeah, and then yeah, at the same wait. time, like, um, but then it's Scottish too. The Scottish will get you, you know. Oh, you know, the, the Scottish <laughs> people are super fun. The Irish people there were were like, super rowdy and 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 wonderful. Um, yeah, but so yeah. I ended up like while I was out there writing like a new like ten minute closer to the show, just because the shows were ending like ten minutes early. Mm. <laughs> so that, so it, it was a fun and interesting challenge. Yeah, because it is it is different. Because Americans are pretty rowdy and say what they want, you know, in, in a difference <laughs> compared to England. Yeah, yeah. I mean, England, there it's different. It's like, no, you will not be doing this, you know. Um, it, there's it's it's different, and and the arts are so huge over there, you know. I think absolutely. I think they they really understand like character acting and and their comedy is incredible. I, I there's just yeah. something about British comedy that. I don't know they're, they're super smart like you know what I mean there's just they're really quick and super smart but now when you are in Hawaii and, and now doing this show so you had to come up with a stand-up for your experience so yes. tell us a little bit about what what you talked about on the show what what were some of your 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 fun little bits on on like you know Hawaii um yes yeah, so I, I I I talked about a lot of different things. I, I I started off the show by talking a little bit about like Hawaiian culture and like storytelling, um, and then and a little bit of like history of the islands. Then I, I I talked a bit about like not a bit like a a, a lot about volcanology. Um, touched on some some entomology stuff. Um, yeah, talked a little bit about like my experiences as as an artist. Also talked about like park rangers and stuff yes yeah, so i was trying to like yeah have like a, a, a fully encompassing um show about my experiences here mm. so what have you been to hawaii before first off i should ask 
Uh, this is my first time on on the island. Ah, oh, cool. So, and you're Chip, you're based in New York City, so this is kind Yeah. of like a night and day thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just Very, a little, very, very different. especially in winter. <laughs> but you guys almost got snow, from what I heard. <laughs> so, so it's a little bit different. But so for you, what was like, you know, getting off the plane and going and and just, you know, you're in the art house, which is super cool. All of us want Yeah. to live in the art house, and I've never been there, but I want to live there. Um, <laughs> it was great. getting there and getting set up, like, what was some of the first immediate like perspectives that you had or feelings of where you were W what do you mean? like when you got there I mean did you go like holy cow it's warm or they really do have better coffee like was, what was what was some of the first things for you that kind of made an impact like just impressions of Hawaii Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so really, what, like, I, I arrived at the airport at maybe, like, 10 p.m., um, picked up the the rental car and immediately drove to uh, Kilauea, to the volcano, and just saw that, At um, night. the, the active lava lake, which Oh. is really incredible, because, like, uh, driving up there, um, there's sort of this, like, this cloud of smoke coming off of the the lava lake and the lava is reflected off of the smoke it's a very like ominous almost like apocalyptic red glow but there's Oh, something cool. like very magnetic about it too so it's just like really powerful experience yeah and then going to the overlook and actually seeing the the lava bubbling out in, in into the lake yeah just very very mesmerizing very primordial so that was my first impression of Hawaii really was Damn, was seeing the lava. that's pretty amazing. Like when you think of it, that's like okay, hello. You might as go go all in. You know, Yeah. it's yeah. You might as well go all in. And so, so what about the coffee? Is it as good as everyone says? So I don't drink coffee actually. Ah, oh, dude, really? I know. You're in Hawaii I and you're not drinking the coffee. Oh my god. Okay. Well, did you eat spam? I <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had Oh, the you ate the spam. Okay, Yeah, they all right, they you've been forgiven. Okay, tell <laughs> me about the spam. Oh, spam was great. I, I had the I had like fried spam wasabi, which is essentially like a like a sushi roll, but with like fried spam inside. Delicious. Okay, tell me from your scientific perspective, what were you eating? <laughs> you, Oh, you probably don't want <laughs> to go there, do you? you want me to speculate about what's in Yeah. spam? Spam, Great I know. spam. Actually, ma Yeah. many years ago, um, the, my family, we went out to uh, out west a little bit. And in, in, I believe it's Montana or no, Nebraska, they have the Museum of Spam. What? Really? Yeah, there there is a whole museum dedicated to spam. No. And you can tell they're very upset that people make jokes about what may or may not be in spam. Because they have like Really? a whole section of the museum dedicated to like people think it's funny to joke around, but our products are high quality, and how dare you question this little tin of meat? Oh my oh are you kidding me? No, This is they they take spam oh. very seriously there. Um, actually, Whoa. my because they they have like samples of spam, and, and like a, a nice gentleman holding it, and my mom rejected the spam sample. And the guy's face like dropped. He was shocked. Like no one had ever turned him down for a sample at the Museum of Spam. Oh, but, okay, but listen, listen, even just what you just said just makes me kind of like pucker, like, you know, re you know, refusing the spam sample, like that just kind of feels like we're going to the doctor. There's something very white coat about that, like the spam sample and no, and then, so from Nebraska to Hawaii, go spam. Yeah, but that's a, that's a war thing, isn't it? Like, um. having spam we had, we had spam when we lived in in south africa it was a big deal it was there it was normal Oh, interesting. we called it corned beef and then <laughs> that's what it was called corned beef in a can spam and um yeah and it would come out like if you go camping you'd have it and you had one of those little twisty Yeah. things to open up the tin Sure. and then it'd come out and it had that weird yellow jelly in there okay i'm done <laughs> that's enough It's I'm enough getting hungry on spam. just thinking about it. Are you? Did you enjoy it?
Did you like it? Um, well, to be honest, I, I, I have had spam before, and I think like directly out of the can, it is pretty gross. But I think if you fry it up, it's actually not bad. Yeah, make a hash. Yeah, yeah, spam yeah, hash. Exactly. That could be good. That that that's okay. Well, this okay. So we went to spam. I think you're the first person talking about spam nice. on um, on the artist show. We, if people talk <laughs> about coffee, but now yeah. when you talked about the etymology yeah. and and also what about the plants? Like, tell us, did like you talking about the cultures too? Like the that's that like I can't pronounce anything there. I I should say Hawaii Com Volcanoes National Park, and I think it's um, I, hard to I, I get it until you're like there. A, like a regional dialect i've heard the, the north of the island says hawaii with like a hard v um but the south side says hawaii um, okay so i think they're, they're both correct actually is, is what i've heard oh okay well then i don't feel so bad but i yeah i think it's really hard to grasp like regional dialects until you're there yeah because you yeah, don't quite sure. understand yeah, you it figure out yeah like what's what's like the south or like what's like what's like oh. the the east coast of the island like what what are the 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 different equivalents um uh, yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah so, but to, speaking of, of of food actually they, they have in the park um they're called oh hello berries um which are all, almost like akin to like blueberries and mm -hmm. if you dig deep on the park's website you can find out you're actually allowed to pick one quart of oh hello berries per person per month <laughs> So I, I spent a day out like picking oh hello berries and then like oh, baking hello? into a pie. Like yeah, oh hello. O H E L O and then like, there's oh, an hello. Accent. So I can <laughs> I can just keep doing my oh hello and have a berry in my oh hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's, For sure. here's it, my it, pie. It's gonna be like who's on first in Hawaii. That's gonna be the <laughs> But this is cool. So berries. So they were ripe while you were there. That's hard to imagine berries being ripe when it's like snowing <laughs> right now in the west like la is gonna get snow like come on oh wow it's it's kind of weird isn't it it's like ah so yeah anything about climate change while you were there um that's that's a good question i mean there's there's a lot of stuff about like invasive species okay. um just because like the the climate is so nice on the island that like really everything thrives there um so like a lot of stuff is brought over either intentionally or unintentionally and then ends up um yeah just, just sort of thriving being very hard to to get rid of um like this was many many years ago i think there, there was um uh, there's like a like a rat problem mm -hmm. and then people decided to to bring over i think they're, they're called mongooses yeah, or maybe, mongoose, yeah, 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 mongooses. Um, and they thought the mongooses would kill the rats, but what they didn't realize is that rats are nocturnal, and mongooses only come out during the day. So they just like never met. Uh, uh, so this is when know, we play God. Just, mm. just, yeah, just, just completely ineffective. So now the island just has both. Um, <laughs> yeah, the mongoose walks around going, "You dirty rat! You stole my spam!" You know. <laughs> Yeah, really. I mean, that, but but that happens with a lot of islands. I think New Zealand had the same thing with the rats. Um, mm. Yeah, I think I think that kind of happens. But it's true. I mean, there are islands. You know, well, more more than one island in Hawaii. But I mean, it's that's going to happen. It's islands have to be so careful about what they're what they allow in. You know yeah. what I mean? Just because of that, I, we do a lot of coverage on um, the San Juan Islands up in Washington state and just even in tourism, it's like, you can't, you go for a hike in the park. There's no trash. You mm. need to take it out with you. It's yeah, they're yeah, very, absolutely. they're very, um, you know, go home with it, take it back to Seattle. And then when you're in Seattle, like if you have a trash can, like for a trash pickup, it's the teeniest of cans. The biggest trash cans are compost mm. and recycling. So it's it's like a whole different world, and then you can go other states, and it's like everybody just dumps everything into a big dumpster. <laughs> it's in some places still burn their stuff, you know. It's, it's yeah. um, we're still yeah, in some, an some interesting states place. are an entire landfill. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you were there, I mean, with that about the invasive species, or did when you hiked, did you have to take your like if you had a sandwich, take the wrapper home with you, kind of thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I, I wasn't eating that much on, on the trails, but yeah, no, Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm always pretty careful and cautious to try to not disturb the place. Yeah, and Um, I mean, I'm like yeah, trashing cause it, but do they have trash cans and things like? Because parks are starting to they either do it or they pull pull them out, you know, depending on islands. I feel That's like that's it may be at the visitor center, hmm. uh, but, but that's about it. I think they generally oh wow. trust people to, to be responsible or, or it's some Yeah. of like the, like the more central areas that they, they might have like a little bit more Yeah. infrastructure. Um, That's cool. That's cool, though. I mean, because you have to do things. So tell me, you did make a pie, though. You actually baked a pie. Yeah. You baked a pie. Okay, so do you, do you normally bake pies? Well, you're a scientist. You can bake things. <laughs> yeah 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 no i i very much in, enjoy baking yeah so i i, I bake pretty frequently uh It's a so science. it was, it was You have to. You have to be. It, baking is not like oh cooking. yeah no absolutely yeah no i actually have at home like a little like digital scale so oftentimes i'll like measure things out to like you know like 0.1 grams get it as as accurate as possible Oh my gosh, uh <laughs> you are a scientist. <laughs> that, that's, well, you probably have a good result compared to what happens if I bake. Like Uh, but to me. you would be surprised by how many times I, I measure very carefully and it, it has no effect. Um, it, it, there's also some, some technique. It's, it's not purely measurements. But this is interesting because um, it's not the first time we've talked about baking. Um, from produce on the show in, in regards to National Parks Arts Foundation artist residencies. Uh, really? They had a residency up in Gettysburg and the Klingle House, Klingle or Klingle House, Klingle House, um, on the property, which we actually got to see um, a couple years ago on, on our trips, you know, on our Love Your Parks tour, we went to Gettysburg and saw the famous house. Um, but all the artists and residents there, depending on when you're there, you could have fresh peaches. And I think Oh, somebody wow. baked peach pie. There's like That's... somebody left a recipe there or there's like books. That, there's something about peach pie in Gettysburg there. And then ghosts. There's ghosts there too. But um, And but do I don't the ghosts add more flavor to the pie? Hey, Or they, who they just knows? tell you the recipe? Yeah. Or they just add like a little you know, like burning taste to it. <laughs> yeah. But Yeah, yeah. the ghosts are already opening up the cabinets. You can pull out the ingredients. to me just as long as they don't eat it you know they can do whatever they want and they can bring marshmallows you know <laughs> marshmallows and have ghostbusters come in but i was gonna Yeah. ask like when you were there did you hear of any kind of haunted stories like any kind of mystical mythical legendary stories from the people that you Um. interviewed Yeah. I. I mean. I. I don't know if. If the term would really be, or at least uh, how I've heard it, is that like you wouldn't really use the term like mythical, but like a. A lot of the stories on the island just sort of actually like tell the. the tale of like how the the land was was shaped and has changed over time um like like there's a a, a story that was very long and i i can't recall all of it but it's about like um pele and the, the the fire goddess who lives in kilauea having like a a big fight with her sister essentially and the lava lake like went down and the the it filled up with with water Um, and this is like a story that's been passed down for, for many, many generations that people just assume to be, uh, or scientists assume to just purely be a story. But then actually in 2019, the lava lake did drain and filled up with water. And scientists reconsidered like, oh, wow, this is actually based on what happened in history and got, you know, woven into the, the, the stories of the, the Hawaiian people. Um, yeah. Yeah, That's, so it's you know, it's pretty it's interesting. not just folklore, you know, and I Yeah, think yeah, sometimes no, it, it science is was actually. like, oh, yeah, that's folklore. But, you know, this is storytelling has been how history has been documented for so many years. So Absolutely. science has got to be included. That's interesting that you say that, you know, um, because science, I, I think we've got to have, uh, you know, the general population of America um, 
and maybe the world need to have a better understanding of science. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, this is my yeah. own opinion and everyone can yell at me later. Um, and I no, will not I, be politically correct. No, I, I, I just think that there's been this, you know, science is always going to change. And so mm -hmm. whatever is there is like, it, it's, it's the current thing. And I think science has really changed and in, in science and scientists have changed over the years to embrace more of the, the other side is, as you will, like um, even looking at things like, you know, um, when do people, what happens when people die and come back? Like they've had to kind of embrace like science and like the, the you know, the science and the cloth basically have had to, the microscope and, and spiritualism have had to kind of unite in a way over the years. And I think what you just, that story you told um, kind of, validates that in a way you know and it's not always spiritual but storytelling has always had a spiritual side to it right mm -hmm. um yeah. a, a, a bigger universal picture and a respectful picture of our universe so that's kind of what i was saying it's we've the society understands science always changing there's always going to be something new but it's not it's not just understanding and learning more and going oh now we just learned this but at the same time, everything is revolving and changing all yeah. the time in science. Oh, for that's sure. the other yeah, thing, yeah. right? So, you know, absolutely. Yeah, that's the point of science is that, like, you know, it, it can change, it, it can get overturned, people can be wrong. And then, yeah, but it, it's also tough with such like a public facing institution that, like, if they admit the, that they're wrong, they don't know something, and people like lose faith in it mm -hmm. or stop believing that the science It's like a very tricky um tight rope back to to walk unfortunately yeah which is sad you know yeah. to me it, it's it's kind of sad because to me it's like we should be applauding anytime there is like oh a little bit of learning but then yeah. again sometimes they tell scientists say we can't have coffee and then the next day they say drink coffee and so well, that's well, where <laughs> that, well, that's i think that's where it comes scientist. from i feel like that's more like the Doctors. media sensationalizing science or like oh, they'll take point. like one part of one study that's like this compound might have slight positive effects and like if, if you read the study it will say something like very inconclusive but then the media just blows it out of proportion mm -hmm. um but nobody takes the time to actually read the study or learn the thing that they're actually talking about they'll just glance at a headline which is why there's so many conflicting like health headlines out there um or, or sometimes there are also studies that are like funded by certain um mm -hmm. food companies or, or organizations so you also check <laughs> if anybody yeah. listening to the podcast is reading scientific papers actively but just check at the bottom they have to declare um any like conflicts of interest or who's funding the study if right. it's a, a non-scientific organization yeah, it's like when NPR so. does a podcast about, oh, Facebook got in trouble. By the way, Facebook pays us for advertising. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of that kind of thing. And it is yeah. true, but it's, um, oh, if we could, that's a whole other podcast, honestly, about, you know, just, um, oh, here, we're promoting safe eating and this, this, this. And then you find out it's actually made by a chemical company. And I won't get into those names, but. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's a, like I said, that's a whole other podcast. But but I think it's interesting about, you know, the storytelling and then how that aligns with science mm. and then becomes valid, you know. So when when you were there, like, are, are you watching people also kind of change, like the scientific community change with, you know, these stories that have been passed down for a generation? Um, is, yeah. is it, like locally, are, is the mindset changing a bit? Absolutely, you know, it, it definitely seems like, um, you know, the the way that uh, a lot of science was was practiced when it, it first got started around here, like like the like Western science, like a, a hundred or so years ago, that was very like disrespectful to the local culture. Didn't really take into account um, people's per perspectives on 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 the lava, on on the volcanoes, that sort of stuff. It seems like now the way it's done is a lot more um, respectful and inclusive and, and there's sort of like a deeper cultural understanding and also an understanding that there is sort of like a, a, a symbiosis that there are things that that science didn't even know that these stories knew 
you know, hundreds or thousands of, of years before scientists had, had any awareness. Mm. You know, it, it's, it is, it's fascinating. And I think this is something everywhere, right? But definitely the people had um, a lot of change put upon them. You know, the indigenous mm. peoples of, of yeah. Hawaii had a lot of change just like here now you're gonna have this now you can you know now you're not gonna have this you know what I mean it's like yeah, yeah yeah change is certainly a very polite way to put it <laughs> yeah a change that's it oh there you go change there you go but yeah and I mean that's but I mean we can look at that with history around the world right of what people do but then nature is doing it too nature is always changing and yeah. at the end of the day we always kind of have to heed to nature's call you know mm. We all have to go to the bathroom. I'm back to gas again. Sorry. But it's true. Nature kind of always, you know, she's going to dictate what's going to happen, you know? Um, yeah. And hopefully that's where people can come together a little bit better. So going to this residency and being there for a month, what is something that you, you come back home going, okay, I really learned this. I mean, did it change you a little bit in, in your, your jokes in your writing um, your mindset. Um, did you learn new skills? <laughs> oh wow, that 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 that's a lot of questions. The whole time you're working off, I'm like, oh no, have I changed? Have I not no. learned anything? Oh, this. No. Is... <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know what I mean. Did what? What was your takeaway from it? From doing a residency and and this kind of residency, like you said, this wasn't you weren't quite looking to do this and then all of a sudden you found it and you're like ooh yeah and you yeah, know yeah. So it's definitely been very unexpected I mean it's definitely been like a a really cool opportunity yeah just to like immerse myself in a place and I guess it's like not exactly how I generally like develop material um but like generally it is like a little bit of a a, a a different process I don't like start out with a goal like I'm going to write jokes about this now and then I write all those <laughs> jokes it's, it's it's a little bit more um, wishy-washy. <laughs> it's a little bit more just artistic, like, oh, whenever I'm inspired. Um, but but this is very interesting to come here with, like, a very pointed goal um, and, and, and try to tackle it. Well, that's kind of interesting, too, from a comedian standpoint. That's something like if you get hired to write for a movie or something <laughs> like that, right? You would have to kind of go that way, you know? I always yeah. wonder how people do that. Like suddenly you have to be funny or like you have to be funny for a sitcom. Like how do they do the daily show every day? You know, you know, when, especially when <laughs> they, the world's they, crazy. They have, they have a, a, a team of writers and then they, yeah, they, they work on Yeah. It. There's a team yeah, because you can't rely yeah. on one person being funny. Oh, certainly. Yeah. You yeah. No, I, I've definitely, I've definitely submitted a, a, a couple of packets um, where you just like, they ask you to write like 30 monologue jokes, really? um, which is essentially like a headline is like a setup and then you have to write the punchline, um, which also is sort of like a, like a fun challenge. I know. I was going to um, say that is fun. Like, yeah. and then you have to do it politically correct in a way. Right. And isn't that also hard? Like you just want to go like this and then you go, Oh boy. Cause comedy. Oh, that's mean, the other it's thing. On, like TV. You got to be yeah. like clean and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, isn't that the hardest thing right now for comedians is um, there's a battle of being able to say things and, and everyone getting mad and maybe not. I, I wonder half the time if the audience is actually listening to the entire thing the comedian has said or quite got it, like, you know, before raging out. So it's kind of interesting. And then there's comedians who do more of a cleaner thing. And and more and I think like your side, you've got an educational front. So, um, do you do anything with like youth with with your your stand up, or is it mostly for adults? Um, I mean, I generally, the, yeah, the, the the people that that come out to comedy shows are like adults, or like sometimes I've had like parents bring like teenagers out, and like my my stuff isn't like that dirty but it, it's there's maybe like a, a little bit in, in there i i don't mm -hmm. i don't generally swear in my act but also like i don't have anything against people that do swear i think there are lots of different ways to be funny um mm -hmm. and so i, I yeah I, I i have like a pretty broad taste in comedy despite whatever my my comedy is i've done shows for there used to be a, a guy in new york who used to do like 
family shows where people bring like a five-year-old, a three-month-old infant or something like that to the show, um, which is, yeah, it's, it, it's weird, but it's sort of like a whole different thing being like a children's entertainer. Mm -hmm. um, Dude, I know. Of... I was a clown once. Nancy and I were oh, really? clowns. <laughs> yeah, we were doing this. Um, it was to fundraise for a nonprofit. We dressed up as clowns and we did these coloring books. Actually, part of our was part of also our marketing research before we opened our magazine in San Diego. This is like over 20 something, 25, 26 years ago. Okay. And um, we said, oh, well, we'll dress as clowns and sell these books and see what's going on and get to know the area. And oh my God. Like, honestly, of course, we went to a drive through in a clown's outfit. <laughs> of course, that didn't work. And then people, could hire us as clowns if they bought x number of books and go to like oh my really? god how, kids are how, kids how are brutal books, yeah it, yes, it, like oh, how many how many books does it take to hire a clown i think it was what, like 100 or something i don't know it was like a specific donation kind of thing for the nonprofit. and oh yeah <laughs> then we went out and then i remember a holiday inn invited us to oh they paid to have us as their entertainment for a christmas party and we had no clue what we were doing we did not know <laughs> what you we danced around and like played with it's like i can do adult humor but i cannot do it was like kids yeah. humor for adults and we were trying to do these little dance routine it was it i can't even it is i can't even believe i'm saying this like i can't even believe i'm telling people this but it's yeah, true i mean like it, it was the weirdest <laughs> I mean, you're you. They hired us for X number, of hours and we're like, oh my god! And it's not like kids where you can do face painting and draw yeah. snot coming out of their nose or something. Like you, you know, that would be what Nancy would do. She'd paint snot and whatever, <laughs> and then the parents would freak out. The mothers, oh, you don't do that. But the kids loved it, you know. But well, the nice. boys. Well, at least you knew your audience. Well, yeah, the kids were easier, but some of them were brutal. Like you're not funny. You need to do this. And we're like, really, buddy? Like, what? Like, yeah. Then you want to become evil cloud. And then you're like, this is so not. No, anybody doing any of that kind of work, I bow down to you because I will never do it again. We were terrible. It, it was probably some of the worst experience. I chased a guy at a street fair because he hit our booth in the little, little train going around. And he kept hitting our booth. And next thing you know, I'm a clown chasing a guy, <laughs> swearing at him in the street fair. And, and have you worn those shoes? Listen, don't do it. No, because eventually you will face plant and you yeah. have makeup on and that makeup sucks too. So anyway, sorry. No. <laughs> no, I appreciate no. you telling me. That's, that's, uh, don't be a clown. A <laughs> don't do it. It's hard. <laughs> It's really hard work and you don't get anything from it and no one's nice to you. And people oh, oh sure. okay, it's, wait. It's very disrespected. The actually the best thing is when we're a clown at street fairs, there are people that are really scared of clowns, and that's funny. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> they, they basically see you and they bail yeah. the other way, yeah. running, some hysterically. Yeah. Now that's that was funny. the greatest joy in your job was just traumatizing people. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, but like, if you ever do it, you let me know how it went. <laughs> and if you ever want to do it again. Have you been a clown? Yeah. No, I, 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 I have not been a clown. I had not considered it. Maybe if comedy's going really poorly. Don't, don't do not do it. You'll see me on the streets one day. Just don't ever do it. It's not. It's. Not. <laughs> but I mean, I do have like, for doing kids comedy, that's a whole other like you have to be up on because like kids have um like they yeah. they and there's like a whole culture going on there like i don't know who the newer you know actors and actresses are you know like you know from when you're a teenager on kind of thing but then like kids have that now they know who's cool and who's not and you have to yeah. keep up with that that's a whole <laughs> other world <laughs> My gosh. But I, I would have thought that with science, you could do some kid stuff. Potentially. Actually, at, at the at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, um, there was a, a children's science show, but it's mostly like experiment based. I mean, the, the guy's like a stand up comedian who's very funny, and like puts jokes in there. Uh, but his, his show is actually playing in a different room at the same venue 
at the same time as my show. It's like while I'd be doing my show, there would be children from his show that'd be running through the halls screaming. Uh, so it, it, it made it a, a little bit difficult to do my show. Sure. Uh, but the, 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 there is a, a children's science comedy out there. Ah, but I like that you're doing it with adults because I think we don't understand everything again. Like I'm going back to it. I think we kind of, some mm. of us really geek out on it and, and get into stuff. Like as a kid, I was all into things. And then you hit certain plateaus of going, I don't know what that is. And that's now too far for me to understand. And we really don't understand. And with national parks, you yeah. know, especially geology and natural science and, mm. you know, how do these plants survive and, and all of these different things. We're, we're seeing a culture of a lot of Instagram run to this, take a photo. And I went there, but did they understand the millennia mm. that, you know, how long it took to create this rock, this, this hoodoo, or how, you know, how lucky you really are to see this specific plant or, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. More than a hashtag. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 There isn't the, the same amount of depth with social media, but actually sort of like the, the interesting and sort of counterintuitive thing about Hawaii is like some of the, like you expect when you see a rock that it's like millions of years old, but sometimes you'll see, a bunch of lava out here and it's like oh that's from 1979 like <laughs> the wow. lava is like 40 years old it's actually a really new rock that you're looking at just because of the amount of volcanic activity is constantly new rock being produced that's amazing like you could find you know rock according to your birthday <laughs> you know? yeah but i think that's the thing it's like um getting to have people understand you know so now are you going to take your experience now and use it in other stand-up shows when you go back to new york and do other travels oh absolutely yeah no I, i'm hoping that like through the through the experiences here like the material that i've developed could become like my second hour of stand-up comedy um oh, so cool. currently like i I have like the first hour that I made for Edinburgh and now I'm like touring around the the Midwest in April, the UK in cool. May, other dates in the future. And then yeah, hopefully like next year I can get the, the volcano show in in shape for, for touring around is, is my general goal. Cool. Cool. Where are you going to be in the Midwest? Uh, going a bunch of places. I'm going to be at um, Columbus, Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, Iowa City, St. Louis, Kansas cool. City, um, and one or two places that I'm forgetting. Nice, about. nice. We're going to be doing a lot of that too. A lot of we're, we're actually on our way to Wisconsin for the snow. Oh, awesome! I don't know if it's going to be awesome in the snow, but you know, we've done it in the snow. But like right now, it doesn't seem like it's going to be fun driving into it. But we'll find <laughs> out. We'll find yeah, out. Yeah. You know, just always take wine and cookies, and you'll be fine. <laughs> and get through anything if you have wine and cookies or chocolate, you know. But but apparently now we need to have these oh hello berries. <laughs> I want my oh hellos uh <laughs> berries, you know. But this is this is cool. So I'm glad you're gonna keep touring and keep going and going back to England. That's awesome. So yeah. on uh, England side, not not just uh Scotland, or are you going back to the fringe festival? Uh no, I, I'm I'm not gonna be doing the, the fringe this year, but no, I'm just gonna be like touring around bunch of different venues going to like belfast going to um, oh. southampton cambridge london um and uh, i'm doing the the brighton fringe in may and then also there's um the i, I just got an email from the the uh, they have a small fringe in finland in may so i think i'm gonna be doing a, a couple of shows out with them as well cool um, a yeah. Finland fringe. Everybody wants yeah. a Finland fringe. That's cool. That sounds cool. I like it. So everyone can go to your website, right? Yeah. And get, yeah, yeah. get and follow what you're doing. So I want to give everyone again, the National Parks Arts Foundation org is the website for NPAF. That's what we call them. But go to BenMillerComedy.com. But um, are you going to apply for another residency? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 that would be wonderful. I, mean, cool. I, I need to finish out this residency. But yeah, yeah. would absolutely love to. It, yeah, it, it's been a truly incredible experience. Cool. Very cool. I love it. And um, would you go, like, out of all the parks in the National Parks Arts Foundation, where would you want to apply again? Like, would you do dry tortugas on your own island? 
Like you'd have to talk to like hermit crabs and stuff. Like, yeah, absolutely. Get get all their secrets. Listen to a bunch of shells. See what yeah. they have to say. Yeah, like talk to the you know the rays and like yeah the turtles the baby turtles come out. That would be cool to hang out with the turtles. Yeah. yeah, it sounds wonderful. Have you seen the other parks? Is there other ones that you would apply for, or do you want to go back to Hawaii? Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not super familiar with, with with all the other parks. I mean, on on my own, I've been to a couple other national parks like Big Bend, Yellowstone, Grand Canyon. Um, I don't know if those are all part of the the Arts Foundation, but yeah. Oh no, I think Big Bend. They they've had some uh, programs out there. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, and um, and then Tanya Ortega. I know she used to work in Yellowstone. Tanya did. Um, the founder. So yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a tie in there. But awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, and congrats on doing your. It was so that, that would be your first stand up in in Hawaii, right? Um, sort of. I mean, there's actually like a small comedy scene out here, so I've done a couple shows while while oh. I'm here. But this, yeah, this is my first like it's like headlining show in Hawaii. So yeah. Oh, okay. So what was the oh before you go? What's the comedy scene like? <laughs> it's like, it's like, pretty. Is this in a bar or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One one was in a bar. One was in an elk's lodge. Really. Uh, yeah cool yeah, yeah, yeah. hey were they funny like the comedians yeah yeah no it's it's a fun scene it's it's pretty small there's maybe like 12 or 13 comedians on the island uh which is crazy because in new york there's like five thousand, ten thousand comedians uh, oh, so wow. it's, it's 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 a much smaller scene out here but uh, everyone's very nice nice that's cool i mean because it's kind of isn't that the, the same thing like musicians like musicians will just kind of like like a magnet to each other right and mm -hmm. isn't that the same for our comedians it's like okay you guys understand us nobody else understands us we're, we're, we're hanging together <laughs> yeah, is that, that what it's a like polite way of saying we're all outcast losers i appreciate that <laughs> i didn't say it that way i just said like you you magnetize towards each other like i don't know who the magnet is but everybody starts clinging on yeah, yeah, so basically sure. I called you all Klingons and no, I'm just kidding <laughs> but no but I, I really it's it is like that I mean I know because I you know we interview so many different artists like musicians too some are like in this when they find out oh you're a musician okay now I can talk to you but like yeah that's it but then if they don't know we know music and and you know perform and everything and write and then it's like okay I, I don't know what to say to you <laughs> It's, it's like it's, you know, it's for sure. there, there is definitely like a like a common cultural experience amongst comedians or yeah. like a, other performers where, where there's like a bit more of an instant bond than an it, understanding it, it it's family it's kind of like a <laughs> it's a bonding thing i think and supportive yeah, yeah. i think the artist artists in the world support each other quite a bit you know they really Absolutely. do well, thanks so much, Ben. Enjoy the rest of your time there and go eat some berries, but don't eat the purple ones. You never know what can happen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks Take so care. Yeah, Thank really you.